What if I told you that the world as we know it was meant to end, only to be replaced by a new one? Picture a world where the old gives way to the new, not through destruction and despair, but through renewal and hope. This is the concept of new heaven and new earth, a fascinating and hopeful ending depicted in the book of Revelation. Now consider the genre of apocalyptic literature. These were not mere tales of doom and gloom whipped up to frighten the faithful. Rather, they served a purpose in the ancient Jewish and Christian communities. They were intricate tapestries of symbolic narratives designed to convey messages of hope and encouragement to people facing trials and tribulations. So, brace yourselves as we step into a world of visions and symbols, a world that challenges our conventional understanding of endings and beginnings. So let's dive into the book of Revelation to understand this intriguing concept. Our story begins with a vision, a vision seen by John while on the island of Patmos. John, a man of great faith, finds himself in exile, isolated from the world. It is here, in the midst of adversity, that he receives a profound and prophetic revelation. The book of Revelation, also known as the Apocalypse, is the last book of the New Testament. Its setting is a time of turbulence and tribulation, a world on the brink of change. The vision presented to John is filled with symbols and signs, a cryptic language through which divine messages are conveyed. Now let's delve a bit deeper into the symbolism. A significant symbol that repeatedly appears throughout the book of Revelation is the number seven. In biblical terms, seven represents completeness or perfection. It's a number that's deeply woven into the fabric of this prophetic vision. Firstly, we encounter the seven churches. These are not just physical churches, but represent the entire body of Christ. Each church, with its unique strengths and failings, symbolizes different aspects of the Christian faith. Then, we have the seven seals. Each seal, when broken, unleashes a new event upon the world. These events, ranging from conquest to death, signify the trials and tribulations that humanity must endure. Next, the seven trumpets sound, each heralding a divine judgment. The trumpets serve as warnings, announcing calamities that are both terrifying and transformative. Finally, the seven bowls of God's wrath are poured out onto the earth. These represent the final judgments, the culmination of God's plan for a fallen world. John's vision, however grandiose, was just the beginning of a much larger narrative. A narrative that takes us from the present world through trials and tribulations and into a future filled with hope and renewal. As we journey further into this vision, we'll uncover more of its mysteries and what they signify for us today. As John's vision progresses, we witness the destruction of the old world. A world we once knew, now consumed by chaos and upheaval. The four horsemen emerge as harbingers of this destruction, each representing a different force that disrupts the balance of the old world. The first horseman, clad in white, symbolizes conquest. His arrival ushers in an era of domination and subjugation, disrupting peace and unity, followed by the second horseman, the Red Rider, who embodies war. His presence brings conflict and division, tearing apart societies and nations. Then comes the third horseman, the Black Rider. He signifies famine, a scarcity that strikes at the very heart of survival. Food becomes scarce, resources dwindle, and desperation sets in. The fourth and final horseman, the Pale Rider, embodies death. His arrival marks the ultimate consequence of the previous three horsemen's actions. Together, these horsemen bring about the end of the old world. A world once familiar, now distorted beyond recognition. The earth quakes, the skies darken, the oceans roar. A world consumed by conquest, war, famine and death. A world that could not sustain itself in the face of such destructive forces. But as the old world ends, a new one begins to take shape. The ashes of the old world become the foundation of the new. A world reborn from the ruins, promising hope and renewal. A world that rises from the shadows of destruction, looking towards a brighter, more harmonious future. From the ashes of the old world, a new heaven and a new earth begin to emerge. This is not a mere restoration of the old, but a complete rebirth, a fresh start. This captivating vision is detailed in the 21st chapter of Revelation, where we are introduced to a realm beyond our wildest dreams. The new heaven and new earth are not mere geographical locations but symbols of a transformed reality, a divine realm where God and humanity coexist in perfect harmony. 
It's a place where the sorrows and sufferings of the old world are no more, where tears are wiped away and death loses its sting. Now let's turn our attention to the New Jerusalem, a city unlike any other. It's often referred to as the Bride of the Lamb, symbolizing the intimate relationship between God and His people. The city is described as having foundations adorned with every kind of precious stone, walls of jasper, and streets of pure gold. This is not just about physical beauty or wealth, but a representation of divine perfection and completeness. The New Jerusalem is also described as a cube, equal in length, width, and height. This is significant because in biblical times, the only structure that was a perfect cube was the Holy of Holies, the most sacred part of the temple where God's presence was believed to dwell. So the New Jerusalem is not just a city, it's a sanctuary, a place where God's presence permeates every corner. Furthermore, there's no temple in the New Jerusalem because God himself, along with the Lamb, is its temple. This means that God is not confined to a particular place, but His presence is everywhere. There's no need for the sun or moon for light, for the glory of God illuminates it, and the Lamb is its lamp. This new world, free from sin and death, represents the ultimate hope for humanity. It's not just about a future hope, but it also inspires us to live in a way that reflects this glorious future now. The vision of the new heaven and new earth is a reminder that no matter how dark things get, there's always a dawn waiting on the horizon. So what does this hopeful ending in Revelation mean for us today? In the midst of our modern times, rife with conflict, suffering and uncertainty, the vision of a new heaven and a new earth holds a profound resonance. This image so vividly painted in the book of Revelation isn't just an idle dream or a distant future. It's a beacon of hope, a promise of renewal that can inspire us here and now. The new heaven and new earth are not just about the end of the world, but the beginning of a new one. It's about transformation, about the old giving way to the new. It's about the hope that no matter how dark things may seem, there is always the potential for light to break through. This vision, this hope is not just for the future, it's for today. It's for the mother who worries about the world her children will inherit. It's for the activist fighting for justice in a seemingly unjust world. It's for the individual facing personal trials, reminding them that there is always the possibility for a new start, a fresh beginning. In the face of suffering and hardship, the promise of a new heaven and new earth offers a beacon of hope. It reminds us that even in the midst of turmoil, renewal is possible, change can happen, and a better world is on its way. In the end, the new heaven and new earth offer a vision of hope and rejuvenation, a promise of a better world that is yet to come.